Hello everyone. Um, we are, today we are going to speak about uh, clinical pharmacology and drug therapy of anemia. I am Dr. Hassan, Associate Professor of Clinical Pharmacology, Drug Therapy and Clinical Research. Uh, anemia may be defined as a decrease in hemoglobin level or red blood cells volume that lead to lower uh, ability of the blood to, the, to carry oxygen to the blood and tissues to the organs and tissues, to the cell organ or tissues. According to the WHO, the, the anemia may be defined as uh, hemoglobin level less than 13 gram per dc for men or less than uh, 12 gram per dc for women. Patients may suffer from signs symptoms include but not limited fatigue, palpitation, shortness of breath, dizziness, and uh, insomnia. Uh, commonly used agent to treat anemia, we have ion supplement, we have B12, we have folic acid, and erythrobiosis. Then we have blood transfusion. Okay, related to the agent used to treat anemia, we have ion supplement, B12, folic acid, erythrobiosis, uh, stimulating agent, intravenous ion, and blood transfusion. Okay, so what we have here for the ion supplement, as you can see here for that, we have oral or could be a, a injectable for a product, oral or injectable product here. For the oral, we have ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate, fer, fer, uh, ferrous uh, fumarate. Uh, this is Fe2 plus. Then we have ferric. Uh, ferric stands for the Fe3 Okay, so ferric uh, carboxymaltose, we have uh, uh, ion saccharose, then we have ion dextran, sodium ferric gluconate. We have some brand name could, uh, could be that, that, that will should be or maybe could be used during the, uh, the clinical practice and the clinical site. So here we, we need you to remember the product given orally and which product given IV or injectable. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see here, we have uh, three types of anemia according to the size of red blood cells. The size could be large or could be micro size or could be normal size. So when you talk about macrocytic anemia, this is could be related to the deficiency of B12 or folic acid. Microcytic anemia, small size of uh, red blood cells, this is associated mainly with the ion deficiency. Normocytic anemia is associated with the chronic disease or, red, uh, or recent blood loss. Uh, for the macro, for macrocytic anemia, we have uh, this. Uh, we have another maybe name for that. We call we call the deficiency of B12 and folic acid. We call this type of anemia megaloblastic anemia. Okay, um, uh, what we have here, we have the uh, three, three types of uh, an anemia according to the deficiency of these elements. We have ion deficiency anemia, we have B12 deficiency anemia, then we have folate deficiency anemia. Here we need to maybe know the main reason or like ma main characteristic for each type of anemia. For example, ion deficiency anemia mainly caused by blood loss or increased demand during pregnancy, or decreased absorption from the GI system due to the malabsorption, or increased formation of uh, red blood cells. So when you have increased formation, that we, we need more blood, more ions to the cells to be to supply. Uh, B12 deficiency, we patients suffer from, for example, gastrectomy uh, after surgery, after surgery, after the uh, maybe. By remove part of the GI, GI system, remove part of the stomach. Uh, the patient may suffer from decreased uh, secretion of entrancing factors. This factor is very important for absorption of B12. Therefore, patients suffer from uh, impaired absorption of B12, and the patient starts suffering from something called pernicious anemia. Uh, the third type of anemia, B12, uh, B9 and anemia, B folic acid, um, mainly related to the uh, 
the maybe deficiency of folic acid and most most commonly seen during pregnancy uh, and they found if the if the pregnant woman suffer from deficiency of folic acid during pregnancy the baby will maybe suffer from uh, NTD new, neural tube defect like spina bifida and uh, this also this deficiency could be related to the methotrexate Here we have some images for the neural neural tube defect and the spina bifida for the baby born from, for mother with deficiency of folic acid. Okay, uh, um, uh, the, the, um, the human being they get the f uh, the ion from the food even from the uh, heme product or non heme product. We are going to discuss that in the next slide. Uh, ions, the first uh, elements in, uh, in the anemia. Uh, ions, uh, as we all know, our body absorbed anemia, absorbed. Okay, rela related to the ion uh, anemia, um, as we know that uh, the, our body absorbed ion from the diet and uh, store it in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow. Uh, ion is absorbed in the small intestine, especially in the duodenum and ju jejunum. Uh, our body uh, get the, uh, the ion from the uh, heme ions, which are available in animal sources, or non-heme ions available in the plants. And they found that, that, that the heme ions are more readily absorbed by the body compared with the non-heme ions. So we have two type of uh, ions in, uh, in, in the maybe for the external use or for uh, availability in, inside the blood and cells. We have ferrous Ft, uh, Fe2, we have ferric form Fe3. So for ion absorption, uh, they found if you have acid environment, this increased absorption of uh, ions. If we, have, if we, for example, if the patient take ascorbic acid like vitamin C, this increase absorption of ion. Okay, we have some factors decrease absorption of ions such as malabsorption, antacid, tetracycline, defroxamine, calcium dairy products. So for the tet tetracycline, for example, if the patient take uh, or like a female suffer from anemia and you prescribe for um, uh, ferrous uh, let me say uh, fumarate to your patient then the patient suffer from infection and you prescribe tetracycline so what happened here tetracycline will decrease absorption of ions so we need to take this in consideration uh, ion pharmacokinetic, uh, we can prescribe uh, ion products like oral, could be prescribed injection. We have parenteral and we have oral preparation. Uh, ferrous sulfate, Fe2, uh, absorbed uh, more rapidly than the ferric sul sulfate, ferric salts. So F F e Fe2, more absor uh, easily absorbed than Fe3. It's ferrous, more than ferric. Okay. Uh, acidic conditions, uh, when you have acidic conditions, this will be uh, facilitate absorption of uh, acidic condition of the stomach of iron reduce uh, ferrous form to the, uh, uh, to the, maybe the ferric form. Uh, so they found they found their acid, ascorbic acid, vitamin C increased absorption uh, uh, of uh, uh, ferrous by thirty percent. On the other hand, calcium inhibit absorption of uh, ion. 
So what we have there, we have, we need the student to be familiar with the product name available in the practice. We have ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, ferrous gluconate, polysaccharides, uh, polysaccharide ion complex work, and carboxy ion formulation. So all these available like oral. Then on the other hand, we have parenteral injection IM or IV. We have ion dextran. Then we have ion saccharose, ion dextran, ion saccharose. Then we have sodium ferric gluconate. Then we have uh, ferric carboxymaltose. So a list of uh, product available. And try, they try to remind us here if the patient suffer from chronic and we go with the oral because when you prescribe oral ions, this will take a few weeks, several weeks to treat and replace the stor storage of ion. But if the patients have from acute symptoms of ion deficiency, we need to prescribe the ion product I, um, IM or IV in order to maybe replace the deficiency. So here we have some uh, ion products available in the market. Okay, you can see here this one here, ion fum fumarate. Okay. So we have, you can click on the drug name and put on the Google image and look on the, the drug uh, availability in the pharmacy or in the market. So you can see here we have several products available uh, for the Ferrous gluconate, for example, here uh, we have ferrous sulfate. Then we have uh, sodium ferric injectable. We have uh, uh, ion saccharose, ion dextran. So we have several types of ions, oral and injectable formulation. We have some cases associated with ion deficiency here that require uh, to prescribe ion injectable or uh, IM or IV, for example, if the patient enters to the oral therapy, if the patient suffers from malabsorption or non-adherence to the medication or refusing taking the medication, if the patient suffers from inflammat inflammatory bowel uh, disease or gastric bypass, so chronic kidney disease, we have several factors that require parenteral therapy. Okay, uh, for the ion deficiency anemia treatment, uh, uh, essential component of hemoglobin ion is very important. We have two, two maybe agent in the blood, uh, two endogenous agent in the blood is very important for the uh, treatment with the and uh, with the ions. We have transferrin, transferrin from the name responsible for transport of uh, ions, and this is plasma protein responsible for transport. Then we have ferritin responsible for storage of ion. It's like protein ion storage complex. So the question, which of the following protein responsible for transport, transferrin, which of the following maybe protein responsible for storage of ion ferritin? Uh, for dosing administration, we have 150 milligram, 200 milligram uh, uh, daily. Uh, this divided in two, three doses. Recommended to administer this medication one hour before meals to minimize uh, uh, interfere with the food uh, with food and food decrease absorption. But if the patient suffers from the GI uh, gastric acid, gas, uh, gastrointestinal upset or pain, we can prescribe it with food. So we know that food decreases absorption, but if the patient suffers from abdominal pain or gastric upset, okay, we can maybe tell the patient you can take this medication after food to minimize uh, gastric upset. Okay, another important issue here, we in the practice we have seen a lot of cases related to the ion toxicity and this could lead to the death with overdose, especially in children. Uh, therefore, we, we recommend uh, uh, to, for example, emergency center and hospital to have something called the uh, antidote for the uh, ion toxicity. We have uh, the antidote name deferoxamine and deferoxamine, as you can see, this medication used for acute ion toxicity. 
uh, could be used for chronic ion overload, for example. Uh, the furoxamine prescribed the uh, IV and the doses for your information here. Uh, when the patient comes to the clinic, suffer from uh, GI symptoms, dark stall, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and he is on the ion product. Think about ion toxicity. Uh, there is a very high risk of death in children here. But the, uh, the, we are fortunate to have the like, antidote, and the antidote for the for the ion toxicity, so we have the furoxamine. Here they, they start looking on the some product, uh, an IV product or IM product, especially ion dextran. They found ion dextran associated with the fatal hypersensitivity anaphylactic, anaphylactoid reactions. So I will go to the ion dextran. So I will maximize here. This is the ion dextran. Okay, ion dextran, NVED, IV, intramuscular. So you can see the warning. We call this one, this square here, we call we call this square like a black box warning. So you can see it here, black box warning. The first one, anaphylactic reaction. Okay, so this one, very important uh, side effect associated with the ion dextran. So what we have here, anaphylactoid uh, reaction can occur in patient receiving, receiving ion dextran formulation. Okay, we're done with the uh, ion products, FE product, FE2, FE3 product. Moving to the another type of uh, anemia, we, the, we have megaloblastic anemia, which is mainly related to the B12 and folic acid. Uh, normally, megaloblastic uh, uh, anemia, we call this one macrocytic anemia or macrocytic anemia result from failure of DNA synthesis during uh, development of red blood cells. Uh, here, the, the situation uh, could be due to the deficiency of P12 and or folic acid. The patient suffer from uh, uh, deficiency of this substance may lead to the case called pernicious anemia. This is a specific, a specific type of anemia associated with the inability to absorb B12 from the GI system because B12 need to, to combine with the intrinsic factors in the GI system. Okay, for the B12, in order to be... Uh, uh, for the B12 is like a factors need to be uh, available to convert the to help in converting conversion uh, the hydrofolic acid to the tetrahydrofolic acid. So what we have here, we have folic acid. Then we have uh, the hydrofolic acid that will be convert to the tetrahydrofolic acid. But here they found we need cofactors. We need B12 as a cofactor to help conversion of this substance. Uh, Drug-induced megaloblastic anemia, this is very important here. We need to take the drug history from your patient. If the patient, is the patient take any medication as a, as a thiobrine, chloramphenicol, colchicine, clotrimazole, cyclophosphamide, cytarabine, uh, 5-fluorouracil, mercaptopurine, methotrexate, tetracycline, we have less of medication, oral contraceptive, uh, sulfasalazine, we have less of medication, may cause megaloblastic anemia. Okay, talking about B12 and another name for vitamin B12, cyan cyanocobalamin, uh, B12 deficiency uh, can cause wide range of neurological symptoms, include numbness, tingling in the hands and feet. Uh, here we have overlap diagnosis with the diabetes. So if the patient suffers from the, the type 2 diabetes and suffer from numbness, tingling in hand and feet, sometimes we prescribe B12 uh, as overlap mechanism of deficiency B12 and diabetes, uh, weakness and or fatigue. Uh, balance uh, problem and difficulty walking and sometimes we can see memory loss or confusion so
So the cyanocobalamin. Moving to the cyanocobalamin again, castric cells. So castric cells reduces uh, factors called intrinsic factors. The intrinsic factors is very important to bind to the B12 and facilitate absorption. So in the when you have it with food, we have B12 with food. The the B12 arrive to the GI system. The the castric the castric cells produce intrinsic factors, bind to the B12, and facilitate absorption of B12. Uh, therapeutic uses of cyanocobalamin or B12, vitamin B12. We use it for the megaloblastic anemia. We use it for the pernicious anemia due to the decreased uh, secretion of intrinsic factors. Uh, for the peripheral neuropathy, as you can remember from the previous slide, the patients are from uh, tingling and numbness. So if the patients are from these symptoms, we can prescribe B12. And if the patients are from cyanide poisoning, uh, the cyanocobalamin could be uh, the option for the uh, treatment with the hydroxycobalamin according to the medical literature. And we have the mechanism that cover the, this concept. Okay, folic acid uh, maybe enter the, uh, the human body through the food, through the di diet, and uh, that uh, folic acid need to be reduced to the dehydrofolic acid by enzyme called dehydrofolate reductase. So we have, um, we discussed that we have dehydrofolic uh, acid to the tetrahydrofolic acid. So this is a conversion here, it's required to be done inside our body. Therapeutic uses of folic acid, megaloblastic anemia, pregnancy, uh, prevent uh, toxicity of anti-folate reductase for such as methotrexate. This is covered with the uh, rheumatoid arthritis with anti-cancer drugs, uh, mar absorption syndrome. So as you can see here, uh, megaloblastic anemia, for example, when you treat patient with a B12 deficiency, uh, is treated with a first to avoid neurologic, uh, neurogenic symptoms, uh, subacute combined degenerative of the spinal cord. So we need folic acid to prevent an, any abnormality in the spinal cord. During pregnancy, there is an increased need for the folic acid to prevent uh, vita, vita and neural defects by bivida. Okay, uh, when you have pernicious anemia, and we talk about why folic acid alone is contraindicated in the treatment of pernicious anemia, uh, they found in the pernicious anemia the most common cause of lack of intrinsic activity. Intrinsic activity is like um, we, it's important for absorption of P12. So if the patient comes to the clinic suffering from pernicious anemia we, and you prescribe folic acid alone, this is not enough because folic acid is not going to work. We need B12, because if folic acid alone given for the treatment of pernicious anemia, that can mask symptoms of B12 deficiency. Okay, last uh, substance used for... Uh, uh, used for the, uh, the treatment of anemia, we have erythrobiotin, uh, erythrobiotin, uh, EBO, erythrobiotin hormone, that regulate of red blood cells production, uh, which is a process known as erythrobiosis. So erythrobiotin regulate the erythrobiosis. Uh, Ebutin primarily produced by the kidneys. For therefore, so the main source of uh, erythrobiotin, the kidneys. So if the patients are from chronic kidney disease, the result will be decreased uh, erythrobiotin and the, in the clinical practice, we can see anemia. Okay, main effect, they, this, uh, this hormones produced from the kidney, okay, produced from the kidney and stimulate bone marrow to produce uh, red blood cells. So, in other words, okay, the kidney produces erythrobiotin and this will stimulate bone marrow okay to produce red blood cells or erythrobiotin so if the patients are from CKD that means we are going to have deficiency of erythrobiotin 
erythrobiotin or uh, ibiotin, ibiotin or erythrobiotin. This medication prescribed uh, subcutaneous injection once per week, uh, induce erythrobiosis, uh, induce release of reticulocyte from bone marrow. Immature reticulocyte, reticulocyte considered like immature blood cells produced from the bone marrow. And they they found that when you prescribe erythrobiotin to your patient, hemoglobin level and hematocrit will be uh, increased. The clinical use for erythrobiotin or ibiotin for uh, patients suffering from anemia associated with the chronic renal failure. So the question, a patient come to the clinic, has a history of chronic renal failure, what type of uh, uh, product you are going to prescribe? FE, folic acid, B12, or EBO. So which of these product you are going to prescribe to the uh, patients of from chronic Renal, renal failure associated with anemia. So the answer will be a butin. The same situation, bone marrow suppression due to the cancer treatment. Anemia of multiple myeloma, for example. So we have some cases here, clinical cases associated with anemia due to the deficiency of. Some patients may suffer from hypertension with this therapy, headache or ion deficiency due to the rapid increase in the red blood cells mass. Thank you for listening and uh, see you in next uh, lecture.